I want to look at the Closing the Gap report. And with me is CEO of the Australian Indigenous Education uh, Foundation, Andrew Penfold. Andrew, great to have you in the studio once again and to talk about your wonderful initiative. And, and you are in that space where only one... Well, two of the, the, the targets of the seven in Closing the Gap, one of them is in higher education, which is your, which is your focus. Why is it working? Well, the one that we're focusing in is on Year 12 completion. So um, over the last 12 years, the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students completing Year 12 has risen by 20%, which is a, a fantastic um, achievement. There's still a long way to go, of course. Um, but really, the, the, uh, the thing that we provide is opportunities for families who want to send their kids to um, you know, high-quality schools, um, mostly in the big cities and regional areas, where they wouldn't otherwise have access to or affordability for. So really, our whole agenda is partnering with really great schools that have got deep relationships with Indigenous communities and families and looking at how we can grow the number of students, uh, students going into those schools where they really get a holistic education. So they're getting, you know, high quality teaching and learning. They're getting after school tutoring and supervised homework and healthy meals and a safe place to sleep and medical facilities and so on. So it's to finish year 12 to get and, and often at a very good school and how often does that set them up in terms of employment or, or uh, higher education? Yeah, education. So, um, so since we started, um, we have achieved, in terms of the Year 12 completion, so we've got an annual retention in Year 12 completion rate over 90% every year. That's so it's, it's above the, the non-Indigenous rate. Yeah. Um, the other part of what we do, apart from the scholarships to help them attain Year 12, is that we then support those students through transition management to help them get jobs in university, traineeships, cadetships, employment outcomes and so on. And again, in all of the 12 years we've been operating, it's over 90% in terms of all of the graduates we've had so far um, are productively So it engaged. shows when you give them a chance, they can, and, and they, that they do, those motivated students perform... Well, the, yeah, well. The, the great thing is the students have to earn an education. You can't, it's not something you can give them. They've got to do the work themselves, right? And so it's their achievement and their success. Um, and we just see so many examples of this success. And, um, you know, and part of that actually comes from one of the parts of the contract we have with the government. So the government provided funding to us started in 2008 under Kevin Rudd and has, has continued under successive governments ever since. But part of the conditions of our funding is that we have to match that from the private sector as well. So not only are we getting really high results um, in terms of year 12 completion and employment outcomes, but we're also matching the funding from the private sector, making it half price for the taxpayers, essentially. And, and the point is that you don't, you don't just stop on the day of graduation from year 12. This support does carry on. Absolutely. So we have over 700 standards. graduates already from the program over the last 12 years, uh, and we are tracking, supporting, keeping them engaged. I bumped into one of them this morning in Parliament House giving a presentation about a new business that she started in the Great Hall downstairs. Amazing. Mm. Literally in all walks of life. You know, there's teachers, there's social workers, there's small business entrepreneurs, there's engineers and bankers and lawyers, there's refrigeration mechanics and diesel mechanics and literally the whole sort of ambit um, and people who are really engaged in their communities. Um, a lot of the kids have returned to their community. But through the program, we've, um, with the kids in the program on scholarships each year, plus the alumni, over a thousand kids from 400 different communities around Australia. So it's really got a far reach and and, um, and you know, achieving great things. Well, it's great to, to have that opportunity, meet the aspiration, because obviously there would have been families and, and young ones who get to year 10 or, you know, even through to year 7, they want to continue their studies. Yeah. But you can basically guarantee them an opportunity to, to take it well and truly further, yeah. whether it be in higher education or whatever else. Yeah, so we can guarantee them up to the level of our capacity, in other words, funding. So, you know, we're currently supporting around 400 students a year on scholarships. If we had more funding, we'd be able to double that easily, right? So that's the only thing that's holding us back. And when we talk about these targets, you know, there's this gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. So the schools the are there. The, the schools, schools are there. Is there. The capacity is there. The demand is there. So some of the schools we work with, we get 40 applications for one spot. You know, I mean, the demand wow. is overwhelming. Um, and the only thing holding it back is the, is the funding. And when we look at these gaps, you know, everyone talks in percentages. But actually, if you bring it down to people, you know, these are, these are brothers and sisters and cousins and we're talking not a not a large number of individual people that could have this opportunity and succeed if they're given the chance. So in terms of uh, this target as we said it's one of the seven that has been met the two that targets is on, on track on yeah. track to be yeah. met. When you're talking about 
what you've learnt in terms of higher ed high school education through to year 12, what lessons can be learnt do you think in terms of broadening this approach out to other targets and how they can be met? Uh, well, I think that certainly from the employment perspective, we're seeing that if, um, you know, as, as the PM said in his speech this morning, if you get education right, everything else follows, right? Because year 12 completion is really a springboard for success on all the other social metrics. Um, but really, particularly around employment. So for Indigenous students who goes through high school, finishes year 12 and goes to university, there is almost no gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians who complete university in terms of the other metrics that they have. So certainly from that perspective, if you um, provide an opportunity where there's great teaching, great facilities, extracurriculars, tutoring, homework centres, all these wraparound things, and really strong relationships between the school and the communities and the families themselves, and you're giving that choice to the Indigenous families, you're giving them the empowerment to make their own decisions about where they send their children to school. Some families want to go to a boarding school in the city, some want to go to a, a regional campus down the road. Um, you know, it's all about choice and opportunity. But when you get the good quality education in place and kids who are enthusiastic and want to make a difference, then success always follows. Andrew Penfold, CEO of the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation. It's, it's wonderful to see your work continue to have such great success. And, and we, hope, uh, we hope that that can be broader across the targets of this particular Closing the Gap initiative, but well done to you on what you've done. Appreciate the support, Kieran. Thank you. Let's take a break.